Hi, my name is Stephen David. I'm an Enterprise Solutions Architect with AWS. In this video, we're going to discuss how to do remote debugging of .NET applications uh, running in the Elastic Container Service using AWS Toolkit for JetBrains Writer. I have here JetBrains Writer opened up and I've got the basic uh, solution for a .NET Core uh, web application using MVC. Now there's a couple of files that I've added that won't be there when you initially create the solution. First, I've added the .NET, uh, sorry, the Docker um, ignore file. The Docker ignore file is just going to make sure we don't take a couple of uh, folders that have information that we don't want. Essentially, it's going to shrink the size of our container. In addition to that, I have the um, ECS deployment tool spec file. Now this file um, is going to make is what I use to actually deploy to uh, Elastic Container Service or ECS. Um, in that, I had to specify some specific parameters to get this out there. So there's going to be things like our, our subnets, the security groups, um, you know, what I wanted to name the cluster, the service and, and task definition. All of this is, can be covered um, if you visit the ECS tools. And then on NuGet, this tells you how to install those tools. And then if you go over to the uh, project site, you can see more about how to create the specification file. That's not our core focus here. So I just wanted you to know where the resources are to, to learn more about it. So I used those tools and resources to get my uh, Elastic Container Service deployed initially. All right. So that allowed me to go out here and have my service get created. So I have a service called ECS Remote Debug service and it's running a single task and if i go look at that task i can use my external ip to see what the service is what i have running out there basically it's just got my my mvc app is running out in the um out on the elastic container service so going back to our solution the other file that i have that wasn't there initially is I created a Docker file. This allowed me to create um, the specification for the Docker container that I wanted to get deployed in ECS. Um, I want to pay a special note to the service I'm exposing it on port 80. Um, that will become relevant later as we create the specification for the remote debugging. Okay, so now that I have that, um, if I look over here, uh, I have AWS toolkit for uh, JetBrains Writer installed, and that's letting me see a number of my services, including ECS, my cluster, and in this case, the cluster I'm going to work with is the ECS remote debug cluster. So if I want to debug that remotely, because I can build and run the solution locally, but I want to see how it's behaving out on the service. Maybe there's something I'm investigating. I could come here, right click. And I can enable uh, cloud debugging. So I will click that. And the first thing it's going to do is it's going to ask for a role that I have that would allow me to do the remote debugging. I don't actually have a role yet, so we need to go create that. So if I come out and I look um, here, I can see the instructions for how to create that role. I just pull this page up so that you can look at it yourself as well. But this is setting up the Amazon ECS task role. This is what the instructions we need to follow. So we're going to take those, and that tells us to go look at IAM and create a role. I'm going to create the role. This is a um, Elastic Container Service role. And the kind of select my use case, my, my case here is I, I have an Elastic Container Service task. That's what we're doing here. And for permissions, once the permission list loads here, I will uh, look for the SM, SSM uh, managed instance core. That's the permission set that I need to add. And you could add tags if it's relevant for your project. And then you want to name this. In my case, I'm going to call it ECS debug. Um, We'll say remote, and that's close enough. And this will allow ECS tasks to call AWS services on your behalf. Uh, we actually are um, allowing for remote debugging. 
I guess about debugging correctly. And then let's create that rule. I need to remember the name of this rule, ECS debug rule. So now we're going to come back and we're going to try this again. Now that we have the IAM service created, we can go ahead and enable cloud debugging by going back to the AWS uh, Explorer and clicking on the service. We'll be able to check our role and we want the IAM role we just created, which was ECS debug remote. Notice that the warning goes away when we have a role that has the appropriate permissions. Click OK. Uh, this is a warning that we don't want to do this on production. Uh, you really don't want to do this on production. It does change the service uh, in ECS. So we, we want to make sure that we are doing this in a non-production environment because it can affect the service uh, and, and the accessibility of the service. So the first time that you run the the um, configuration it's going to get everything set up um, and it'll actually copy some resources out to your container um, and then it takes a, a moment for the the new services to to get set up over on the other side let's take a look at that so if i look at my ecs cluster right now i just have the ecs remote debug service if i refresh that we will get the new cloud debug service will be deployed with it. There we go. And notice that my desired tasks for the regular service have gone down to zero and it's shut down my task and that I now have a desired task of one for the debug version of the service. It's the same service with the debug wrapper. And that will eventually bring up a running task. It takes a moment to do that. It's more exciting if we go look at the actual task. We can see that it's in a pending state. I'll pause here and come back once the service is actually up and running. Okay, our service is now up and running. We can go see the website by grabbing the public IP address. We can see that our website now with the debugger wrapper on it is up and running. And that's good. So let's go do the debugging. To do that, we need to go back to the AWS Explorer. Go ahead and right click on that and click debug. Now we need to um, configure uh, the, 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 the uh, profile for running. So we're going to do import Docker. Go over here to Docker, get our Docker file. So we're importing settings from this Docker file that we have. Now, it imports some settings correctly, but it doesn't get them all. Uh, it thinks our local path is a slash app, but what it's looking for is your, your bin, right? So it's looking for the bin, the debug, and then, you know, whatever .NET version you're using. And we click open. That's our local path to the DLLs. And then this is the remote path to the DLLs. The remote one is correct. Port mappings. It does... Um, get the remote port. It recognizes the expose command and gets a remote port. And then we just need to use a local port that's available. For me, 8080 is available. You find one that, that is available that you can use. And then finally, we, we need to do .NET and then the path, which in our case will be app, and then the name of the DLL that we're going to use to, um, to kick off. All right, so my DLL is ECS remote debug dot, uh, DLL. All right, so then that will allow us to have our start command, where to find it. We've got artifacts, the path to them, port mappings. All right, we've got our port mappings. Uh, and then, sorry, one last thing. We do want to do a build. Um, this just is a best practice to ensure that we're working with the latest build. And let's apply that and click debug. So it gets going and we can see kind of summary information of the steps and more detailed information of the steps that it's taking to go forward. Um, 
first time you do this, there is a number of files that get copied over, uh, but then this attaches uh, to the remote session and we'll be able to walk through and debug our app. So I'm going to pause the video and come back once it's done setting up. Okay, now that the debugger has been initialized and we are connected to the remote system, um, I've opened up the home controller and the index pages to, to and put some breakpoints in there so we can see it as we walk through it. If I want to you know, step through and debug this code, if I were to click the home page, it's going to land here and I could, you know, do my various break tasks. I could, you know, just step over and I'll go to the next one. I can watch it just kind of walk through the breakpoints and, you know, just actually step through and debug my code. And that is how you debug using uh, AWS Toolkit for JetBrain Rider uh, doing remote debugging on Elastic Container Service. From here, you could uh, debug a variety of scenarios, figure out what's going on with your service. When you're done doing your debugging, we would undo the changes to, to roll the service back by clicking the Disable Cloud Debugging. But first, let me stop my debugging session. I'll stop my active debugging session. And then I will disable uh, cloud debugging. Yes. And it will roll my service back to the state it was before I enable the cloud debugging. And I can turn that on and off as needed uh, so that I can test in uh, my actual Elastic Container Services environment. Thank you. And I hope you found this video useful for debugging with AWS Toolkit for JetBrains Writer.